Hello, and welcome to the day. Thank you for spending your time with us. I'm Jake. I'm Joel. Welcome back to another episode of Jake and Joel Are Magic. We are continuing our Pioneer series with Hour of Devastation. Jake, are you ready to get into some Egyptian cards? I am, but only after the people watching have either clicked like or subscribe. <laughs> and if they're not logged in... Yep. Sit they, back and uh, relax. They need to just relax. So you either need to be doing a like, a subscribe, or relaxing. Right. And uh, then we can get right into it. That's absolutely right. Let's get right into it. We're going to start with Ramanop Excavator. Jake, you can play land cards from your graveyard with this card. Yes. And uh, the card is excellent. Really quick, we just want to say, this set was mass opened. So a lot of these cards, the big thing about these cards is that we are giving you the cards that are you know, low. A lot of the cards in Pioneer right. are starting the spike. Right. And exactly. this set had invocations, like Battle for Zendikar had expeditions, and Kaladesh had uh, inventions, masterpiece inventions. This set has masterpiece invocations. <laughs> so <laughs> there there was a lot of it open. Yeah. So Ramanop Excavator, here we go. It plays alongside Crucible of Worlds. That's yes, it does. the ability that it has. And uh, this card came out, it had a lot of hype. People were like, oh, we're gonna be able to play, you know, Crucible of Worlds in Modern. If a lands matter strategy ever shows up in Pioneer, this card is gonna be part of it because it does play with res redundancy alongside Crucible. It's Crucible on a stick. Absolutely. So, something and to think about. Redundancy in decks like that are really what make them operate after that we got hollow one hollow one has popped up in modern and what have we said this entire series if it's good in modern it's gonna be good in pioneer this is a card that plays into a cycling deck is there gonna be enough cycling in this format who knows we'll see this is definitely a sleeper for that because you know how about a turn one four four well essentially it, you more than the cycling and i do think cycling is important but more than that I this is for the discard like when you yeah. play cathartic reunion and you discard two cards to draw three and now all of a sudden this costs one so you're for on turn three excuse me yeah you're playing cathartic you reunion you're drawing two cards and you're you're getting a hollow one out so I, I think the card is really really nice uh, I think it's a card that's completely fair you know people thought it was busted in modern yeah but you know, I think, uh, I, you know, there's no faithless looting, but I think the card still has legs. Clearly, it doesn't have arms, but it still has legs. <laughs> okay. We're rolling on we're rolling on art jokes at this point, ladies <laughs> and gentlemen. We are looking at Mirage Mirror next. And Mirage Mirror for two, once it's resolved, becomes a copy of targeted artifact, target creature, enchantment, or land until end of turn. You want to double anything? Play a Mirage Mirror. Yeah, dude. It's, uh, it's really, really good. Yeah, this card and is really, really cheap right now. It's really cheap. It's really good. It's versatile. Again, you know, we just had some bannings uh, with Oath of Nyssa and Leyline of Abundance and yeah. the Cat. So the format is going to be open again. Uh, there's no telling what's going to be banned in the future. And these cards that really command a low price point, it's worth considering. It's worth being like, you know, is this is is this something that could happen? Yeah. And when the floor is so low, it's kind of like undeniable. I mean, it's a great EDH card you could always have in your back pocket. In standard, Spark Double at four mana is played. I see it yes. played against me all the time. It does copy Planeswalkers, which is notable. And this card does not. However, this card will copy any artifact creature enchantment until end of turn. And so it doesn't even stick at it, and you can continuously use it to copy whatever you want. Fraying Sanity, Jake, you picked this one. This looks like a mill card. Hello, everybody. Jake likes mill. Oh, it is a mill card. And as, <laughs> as Pioneer continues to get more support for mill, you know, normally every set, we see a card that's kind of like relevant toward mill, a couple sure. cards. And every every now and again, we get something that's really notable. We get an Ashiok or we get, you know, uh, in my opinion, Scheming Symmetry or, you know, or we get... Secret Keeper in the most ex recent... Exactly, set. exactly. And, you know... Drowned Secrets a set ago. Exactly. And we have, in this format, we have Ashiok, we have uh, Breaking, which is, you know, yeah. the, the split card that yeah. mills eight. So when you think about that alongside Frank Sanity, Mill Mill gets close and modern, and it has some really good matchups. It yep. absolutely destroys Tron, but 
the thing about mill and modern is it's just not as fast as burn and that's what people compare it to right. so will will mill make it in pioneer i don't know but if it does Frank Sanity will absolutely be in the deck. Yeah, with mill decks, you have to think that ley lines do exist in this format, and so a player can gain hexproof and completely invalidate your entire strategy from like opening hand, no lands dropped. So that is something to consider, but is mill a viable strategy? It has yet to be seen. A braid. A braid is a card that I picked to be in the set. It uh, this video it is an uncommon, so we're looking it's at so foils good. here. But I mean, three to a creature for lightning bolt, uh, lightning strike, speed and cost. Plus, you could destroy an artifact that's causing you trouble. A braid was fantastic in the standard that it was in. It became a four of three of in most red decks. And I think that it has the potential to eventually be a standard in this format as well. Yeah, I, I absolutely agree with you. The only thing that is a drawback for me is that it doesn't hit any target. Yeah. But that's okay. The versatility that it comes with, it's going to be very rare that you're not able to answer something that's relevant or affecting your opponent's board state uh, for, for three damage. You know, most likely you're going to be able to hit something that's that's a good target. So. Yeah. Uh, having that built-in versatility with the artifact is, I mean, it's it's an excellent card. I can't really argue that a braid isn't good. Right, yeah, and with like with most of this series, you know, this is a four of in your sideboard. This is probably not a four of in your main board, but... I mean, you know, maybe, you never yeah, know. Yeah, exactly. Maybe a couple copies in your main board, you never know. Earthshaker Kenra, talk about another staple of a red deck when this card was in standard. Can't oh, yeah. block, can't block that's that's huge plus when it dies it can come back because of eternalize i loved this card when it was in standard and i love this card i love the potential of this card in pioneer it's always important when evaluating cards to think about does it do something once it makes it to the graveyard and if the answer is yes then the card is worth consideration uh, delve cards interact with the graveyard. There's a reason why Treasure Cruise and Dig Through Time are so good. It's because they're able to utilize the graveyard to get more value out of it. And Earthshaker Kenra, although it isn't a Dig Through Time, utilizes the graveyard like Champion of Wits. Having that eternalize and getting that big butt out again that's ready to swing with haste, right. like that's, it's a notable card. It is, yeah. it is a really good card. A 2 1 with haste in like a, you know standard 2.0 or whatever you want to call sure pioneer it's it's good a 2-1 with haste is good yeah absolutely plus any kind of card advantage that you can get in a mono red aggro strategy is going to be huge and this oh, yeah. card at six mana once it's dead provides that card advantage how about a red board wipe that was a staple in the standard that it was in hour of devastation dealing five to each creature and each non bolus planeswalker are you kidding me this kills all the creatures and oko hello yeah goodbye oko goodbye teferi goodbye narset well kind goodbye, of goodbye sahili oko. now let's actually think about that comes in at three plus two for a food you have to play this the turn after oko comes in which is turn two does it Ultra. really hit oko I mean, maybe not, but it hits everybody else, and it hits yeah. everybody else nicely. Uh, with a, a format that's obviously going to be dominated by three-cost Planeswalkers, you know, we have Liliana of the Last Hope, all of the ones that we've already named. Yeah. Um, you know, it's it's Tech a card three. that, oh, like, no. seriously, Narsa. in, in red-green, you can play this as early as turn three. So, granted, it's going to hit all of your mana dorks that helped you ramp into it. Right. But if it's, if it's able to kill these pesky planeswalkers, it might just be worth it. Yeah. Moving on from that hour, we've got a second hour, which is Hour of Promise. This sounds like a Golos card, searching for two lands and putting them out of the battlefield straight up. Yeah, and there's a lot of deserts that are in the format now. And and will Golos utilize deserts? You know, I think it may. I think I've already seen this card start to pop up in a couple Golos lists. And I'm excited to see Golos in Pioneer. I wasn't excited to see it in Standard. Yeah. I think it was a little bit too much. But the fact that we're able to, you know, play around with that 
in Pioneer is fun to me. I like that there's a Golos deck. I like that there are different kinds of decks. So will this card make an impact? I mean, I don't know. It's hard to tell, but it is notable because it is ramp. It creates dudes. Right. So it's... It's and good. it's cheap like right it. now. It's cheap like everything like 50 else cents. in this set. And that takes us back around to the front of the cards that are our sleeper picks. Everything in the Amon Ket sets, Amon Ket sets, is cheap right now because it was open a lot. But I mean, not, it, not our Scarab Gods or any of the big stuff, but obviously. a lot of the cards are, or a lot of them are really low. A lot of our picks and that's that's where we're landing right now is trying to go for the low picks that might blow up we really appreciate y'all watching the series if you like it hit like hit subscribe if you don't hit dislike we also appreciate that if you want to support us further we've got a patreon the link is in the description below other than that we are streaming twice a week over on twitch tuesday and thursday nights i'm out jake you got anything else mm. I guess I could lint roll myself. Yeah, yeah, lint roll. Look get this. a lint roll. Look at get this. I've got, a, I've got a lint. It's a bar. You go like this. Oh, nice. Yeah. We can lint oh, roll ourselves good. at the end of this. Thanks you for, thank you for watching as we lint roll ourselves. We'll catch you yeah. later. See you later.